Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're going to challenge you with some simple questions. Uh, but uh, uh, sometimes in daily practice life, we lead uh, with uh, difficult situations, high complexity when we are just managing uh, patients with severe acute brain injury. Uh, but at the same time, we also have to um, answer simple questions and still have some difficulties. That's why we bring to you some challenges and about uh, CPP, uh, how, do, uh, how do I evaluate or do you evaluate and do, how do you manage it at bedside? Uh, of course, uh, we want to uh, tell you that uh, uh, um, we are here um, uh, and we have to disclose uh, that we have financial relationship for this uh, symposium with uh, Sofisa. But uh, uh, all uh, our um, presentation, it is not related with products from Sofisa, but only to uh, simple concepts related to CPP. Um, so for um, acute brain injury management, uh, some years ago we started to have a pressure con uh, concept uh, uh, management um, oriented by CPP, uh, as we called uh, uh, the Rosner concept, and uh, most um, more or less simultaneously also the Lund concept. So uh, we sh should we look at MAP or should we look at ICP? And then uh, uh, we went forward and uh, uh, tried to uh, look uh, um, specially to the um, main uh, object that was uh, the CBF concept. So what we, in fact, what we want for our patients is the best quality of CBF and that uh, means best quality and quantity. Um, and so uh, for that we uh, um, optimize the cerebral perfusion pressure and try also to orient it, it uh, by uh, good oxygenation. Uh, as you know, I, I'm from, the, from Porto, from the, uh, that is a city in the north of Portugal. Um, and uh, I work in a, a university hospital. And these are some uh, pictures of our um, NCCU. Uh, for me, I, I went from France. Saint-Étienne is near Fluon in the center of the France and I work uh, in, in a private hospital where I, I have a specially interest on the transcranial Doppler and uh, autoregulation with transcranial Doppler. We are going to speak about this a little bit. And uh, uh, for me, it's a pleasure to share with you uh, our vision of the autoregulation. And uh, we discovered that we have some little difference in analysis of the problem and uh, we are going to uh, share with you this uh, different concept. So uh, Celeste is going to start. Uh. So challenge number one. Um, is there only uh, one CPP definition? So for, for a patient with a mean arterial pressure of 70 millimeters of mercury, ICP 8 millimeters of mercury and the sedation and cryization and complex respiratory uh, states. So uh, low PF and high PIP, and with uh, PAO2 of 80, what do you consider uh, the relevance of ICP, or should we look also at the uh, driving force of CPP, um, also for the outflow, other, other parameters? All organs uh, have the same uh, equation for the cere so cerebral pressure in physiology. And the cerebral pressure, uh, in cerebral perfusion pressure in physiology, is not ICP, is miniature pressure minus venous pressure in physiology. Because you know that we have a negative pressure in the brain in prone posture, and uh, we have positive pressure in uh, 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 supine posture. But uh, the CVP is the determinant of the outflow of the brain. And uh, normally, uh, when you have uh, no disease in the brain, you have this formula to uh, calculate the CPP. Uh, the venous pressure is not always uh, um, insignificant. Indeed, in this situation, it was a patient with a, a big clotting of the venous uh, 
cav super super cav and uh, he has very difficulties to outflow the the, the blood uh, with the venous thrombosis and uh, we can show i show you here um, the doppler before uh, uh, removing of the, the thrombosis in surgical room and you can see there is a, a low cerebral blood flow with high pulsatility index and uh, after operative room uh, when we remove the clotting because the, the, uh, the treat medical treatment was not enough uh, efficient, efficient sorry, we have a normal Doppler so it's uh, an example, extreme, extreme example that when the venous pressure is very high we have to take care in the definition of CPP of the venous pressure and in the situation we described before uh, for the question the patient has a very high level of uh, PEEP uh, expiratory, uh, expiratory pressure. So perhaps with a level pressure of ICP around of eight, the level pressure of CPP was higher. And so in this situation, perhaps the the, the, uh, I, the CPP is not arterial pressure minus ICP, but arterial pressure minus CVP. Because when the CVP is higher than the ICP, probably the the the, um, the equation is not right with ICP. We the pressure inside the venous are higher than the ICP. There is no crush uh, on the, like you have in this situation, you have a starling resistance when the ICP is higher than the CVP. You have a crushing the, the pressure across the venous and decrease the, the blood outflow. But when you have normal ICP, it is the CVP that de determines the, the, the pressure, uh, outflow pressure. So, okay. uh, I think that uh, what Lorhan means is that uh, when you have a driving pressure, you have uh, inflow and outflow, so the driving pressure is the difference. And for sometimes, uh, for, for most uh, um, organs, the uh, venous pressure is more important, but uh, uh, in special case of our brain, we have to think both of venous pressure and intracranial pressure. Uh, that's right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go forward. And then for uh, mean arterial pressure, uh, how do you assess mean arterial pressure in the NCCU? So another uh, simple question, um, perhaps not so simple answer. How do you do? So now, not how do you think it should be done, but how do you do in practice daily life? So uh, this is all, again, a physics problem. Uh, if we are um, having patients at zero degrees, so no problem with the position of the all, the, transi all the, tra the transducers that we want to use because the uh, level of the transducers, so the calibration at zero uh, level, is uh, the same for all. But uh, when we start to, to make a subtraction between two uh, um, pressures, then we have to take into account where the uh, zero for both is. So, uh, so the problem starts when we want to rise the head of bed of our patients. And uh, in that case, uh, we should look at the organ that we want to measure uh, according to the physics uh, properties of the subtraction, where is the zero. And so we should put the zero at the Chagos level, both for arterial and uh, intracranial pressure. Um, but in fact, um, as this, page, this paper showed in the 2013, uh, those who uh, work in the uh, neuro ICC, uh, um, neuro CCU uh, don't work all of them in the same way. And sometimes we have trouble when we are going to interpret uh, a work published and the results published by different groups, uh, we have trouble to uh, uh, understand uh, the mean for the absolute value of CPP because the, uh, there is a problem of the uh, zero definition. So I think that it's, it, it will be important for all of us to define and the, for the recommendations to define where should uh, be the zero level so that we can all talk the same language. Um, so challenge number two, head of elevation. 
how our patient arrives in NCCU, and the nurse asks, how do I set the head of bed elevation? How, much, how many degrees? Zero degrees, 15, 13, 45? Um, so uh, maybe we want to rise a little bit ahead of, of the bed from our patients, for all patients, uh, mainly because we know that uh, that decreases the risk of uh, uh, acquired pneumonia. But uh, uh, for specifically for uh, neurological patients, we also know that we are promoting a, a, a venous outflow, uh, a better venous outflow, so we'll have a decrease in intracranial pressure. But then we start to ask, um, you, how do you do? So when we are just looking about the um, importance and or the relevance of uh, changing the head of bed elevation uh, uh, regarding um, the, the brain circulation uh, and the neck uh, venous outflow, uh, so we know that if we uh, put up the, the head of, of the bed at uh, 15 or 30 degrees, then we'll have uh, a decrease in uh, ICP, what, which is our main object, especially in patients with high intracranial pressure. But we also have to pay for that because we have a decrease in mean arterial pressure and CPP. Uh, um, and uh, when you go to measure um, flow velocity with the TCD, then we also see a decrease in uh, um, mean velocity. And this is not uh, equal for all patients. Uh, so. Uh, if the patient has a monocompartmental uh, uh, status in the brain, there will be uh, no problem uh, according to, to the, the, the situation. But if you have something that is ipsilateral, sorry, like in this slide, for uh, a large hemispheric stroke, then we'll have different consequences in the cerebral blood flow decrease uh, with the increase of uh, head of elevation uh, according to uh, the ipsilateral, so the, the, the hemisphere that has a problem comparing with the hemisphere that is uh, uh, in a good state. So we have to be very careful when we are just deciding uh, which is the best position of the head for our patients and we have to um, think a little bit about our decision and then we have to take a decision of course but we have to follow the consequences of that. Um, and this is also, also another published uh, paper from uh, the group of Lohan showing that, uh, uh, okay, you have a decrease uh, in intracranial pressure, but even for uh, maintaining constant cerebral perfusion pressure, you still see a small difference, not statistically significant, but a small uh, difference in uh, oxygenation and, and the cerebral blood flow uh, decreasing with the increase of uh, bed position. Um, so, in the NCCU, how do you set the CPP level? What do you do to uh, define the, the CPP level? Uh, uh, the guidelines, uh, so th there is the, the um, of course, uh, we have to, uh, it, it's good to have recommendations. It's good to have uh, evidence-based medicine that uh, helps us to have some uh, rules and some definitions that at least are um, protecting the um, maximum number of patients. Uh, but uh, uh, when we just uh, uh, want to uh, target uh, individuals, then we have to look at, at different methodologies. So, a, a brief report of the story of a CPP. Uh, like you know, you know, in uh, 90 years, the, the level of CPP was very high to decrease the ICP, to play with uh, autoregulation. Uh, Rosner thinks it was good to, uh, to, uh, to work with uh, high CPP. Lund had, uh, Lund's uh, university had uh, uh, opposite uh, vision. And uh, in the seven, uh, 20, 10 uh, years, we have uh, a synthesis by the Brain Trauma Foundation with a recommendation at around 60 to 70, like explained uh, 
uh, Celeste. But um, like I explained Celeste before, you know that the sorry, the um, the assessment of the the MAP was different in the several public publication uh, that they can uh, help the expert to define the good level of CPP. So. It's a, a question about this uh, recommendation because we don't know exactly what's the exact level of CPP in the different paper because half of the authors use uh, earth and other half use uh, trigus, trigus level. So for us, for, for me and for us, I think that the, the future is and uh, now, uh, the, and tomorrow the target is uh, adapted CPP for the patient, individualized CPP personal CPP and the CBF has to be the, the, the aim of our treatment and not only to treat a number of ICP. ICP is a tool, CPP is a tool to have a good CBF for the patient. So uh, we have a, a very big question and I'm very interested by your advice on this point. Where is the good CPP for the patient? You know uh, the CPP opt is at the middle of the plateau and uh, I name this the best CPP for the patient because it is, uh, the, the CBF is, uh, is good and the level of CPP is lower. And as explained the uh, Lund concept, higher CPP is not good for the patient, especially for the lung. You know that when we increase the level of CPP above 70, you increase uh, dramatically the level of uh, complication, lung complication. So, uh, my point of view is uh, why use higher CPP if you can have the same level lower. So I would like to know your advice on this point. It's very important. Oh, sorry. It is a very important question. So uh, CPP out or best CPP, no data, I think, to compare in the literature. And uh, this point remains a, a, a big question. I think it's a, a question for the several years uh, ago. And uh, uh, in all cases, I think individualized CPP is better than the same CPP for the whole patient. And if, we, if you, you take time at the bedside to determine the good level of CPP for your patient, it's definitely better than 60, 70 for all patients. So, uh the next question is that uh, then how do we evaluate the uh, CPP uh, that will be the best CPP for that patient in, at that moment? Uh, so um, we use, as you know, uh, the methodology uh, published from uh, the Cambridge group uh, and uh, um, that uses uh, spontaneous oscillations of uh, arterial blood pressure uh, and intracranial pressure uh, to uh, evaluate uh, cerebrovascular reactivity and uh, then uh, give us uh, um, well a model for uh, estimation for uh, the, uh, the optimal CPP. Uh, and uh, of course, the optimal CPP according to this, uh, I could say, uh, theory, and if we don't have a better theory, theory, this is the best theory at the moment, uh, will uh, drive for the middle point of this curve. And one of our discussions, me and Laurent, is that because we think that uh, if you take too much to the left, then uh, you have to you increase the risk of being in the edge of the knife. And so for a multi compartmental model, then maybe we are have having good perfusion for some parts of the brain, but hyperperfusion from other parts of the brain. And, and, and this problem is even more difficult if you have pathology, if you have diabetes, if you have uh, hypertension, so then uh, the, the challenge is even uh, um, higher. So that's, uh, that's why we uh, uh, choose uh, this point rather than other points in the uh, in the curve. Of course, we don't also want to go too further to the right unless there is other problems associated like in the case of vasospasm. And then there is another problem because for that I think we also should look at the 
uh, not only the quantity for, per for perfusion, but also quality, so oxygenation uh, maybe uh, will also help us to define the optimal CPP in those particular cases. So the literature support for these ideas uh, started with uh, Lucio Stein, Steiner, uh, uh, continuous uh, with uh, Marcel Arias, uh, a little contribution of myself, uh, and uh, then the uh, m most, most recent uh, contributions from the uh, um, group from Cambridge and also from the Cogitate uh, trial, which uh, we did not participate because we were already using this methodology in, uh, in, in practice, in daily practice. Um, and the vision from Loha? I have a little difference in my vision. So it's uh, the, the, the hot topic of the presentation. <laughs> so I, I think it's, um, it's uh, for our, my, my profession, I'm doctor and uh, intensivist. And every time for all patients, I challenge the ventilation, I challenge the circulation, and uh, we uh, use physiological uh, measurements to, do, to uh, to assess the effect of the challenge we made on the patient. So uh, with the natural oscillation of the arterial pressure, we are going to look for an information in the trend uh, to predict the best treatment for the patient for next hours. And in my vision, uh, as a bedside, we can challenge the brain circulation uh, to tune the CPP value uh, with the, brain, with the uh, pressure challenge. Uh, as we, we challenge the circulation with the, the le passive leg challenge, uh, with uh, uh, recruitment for the lung, we can challenge the pressure to challenge the circulation of the brain to, 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 to find the good CPP value. Uh, for, for example, it's one patient I am recording with my uh, uh, little software, it's not ICM Plus, it is just to assess the uh, autoregulation at the bedside in the Doppler. So we have on the first line the MIP, the ICP, and the mean value of the velocity. And we have uh, four hours monitoring as the Cambridge uh, recommendation for assess the, CP, the CPP opt. And uh, I start my, my recording by a, ch a pressure challenge. So the, the scale is not very good to see, but we went from uh, 80 to uh, um, 102, uh, 20, so it's 40 millimeters of mercury to challenge pressure on arterial pressure. So I have an analysis uh, sc uh, screen. When I uh, analyze this for our monitoring, I have here the, um, the, the graph of MX per X against MAP, and uh, we can see here the level of MX in yellow. It's 0 0.4 to uh, decide that to uh, estimate that the patient has autoregulation, and two, uh, point, uh, 0 0.25 for uh, perix. So the first uh, level I have in both time, I mix under 0 0.5 and uh, perix under 0 0.25 is uh, 71 between 71 and between 75. And uh, the CPP up, the level where is the uh, higher level of autoregulation is uh, higher around 76 to 90. If I take only the, the, ch the, f the pressure challenge to analyze, so it's only 30 minutes of monitoring, and I found the same level of CPP up and the same level of best CPP in 30 minutes. So my question is, why we have to, uh, uh, with a pressure challenge, uh, as our, another point, with a pressure challenge, we can assess a larger range of CPP because, uh, like I, I, I show you here, if I remove my, free challenge, my pressure challenge of the recording, I have uh, here four hours, it's uh, the whole recording with the pressure challenge, and we can see that uh, we assess the autoregulation between 60 to, to 90. And with the natural oscillation of the patient, I assess only the CPP between 76 to uh, 85 in this example. 
So I don't, uh, ca I can find in the recording, in the trend, the level of LLA. So I am a believer of LLA, so I'm very sad if I have not LLA. So it's for this reason, I think if we add a challenge, a pressure challenge at the recording, we can improve the quality of the signal, we can improve the range of CPP that we analyze this, and we can answer quicker to the question, what's the good CPP for my patient? So the, I think the interest of this, this pressure challenge is to find the, the, the answer with more um, chance than perhaps on the trend, I can find the good level of CPP. So we are going to start uh, a study in France with uh, the aim of the study is to assess the inter oh, Sorry, I am too, a little bit too quick. To assess the interest of the challenge pressure recording, to find LLA, to set the CPP for the patient. Uh, and in the same time, we are going to record four hours to be sure that we can compare with the Cambridge uh, marker of the, of the autoregulation. Yes. I, I now I uh, we we can uh, I can explain how we do, we do. Uh, when you have, for example, 60 or 70 millimeter of CPP of mercury, we increase to 80, and after we decrease the the the, the posology of norepinephrine to have a decreasing of the pressure, to have a valley, and after. We, we, we move, move uh, higher than the level of uh, norepinephrine to go at the same level of the pressure before. And the, the, the aim of this, uh, this uh, technique is to have a good um, spreading of the, the arterial pressure on the abscess to, be, to have more information of uh, the effect of the CBF and to, uh, to assess the autoregulation. Some take home manage, uh, messages, but uh, of, of course the final target of autism is, is to optimize your blood flow. CPP is definitely an important determinant. Be careful about the CPP assessment methods because uh, we are always doing inference, uh, taking uh, into account that the terms of our syllogisms are true and sometimes are not. Uh, and challenge serial circulation is fundamental to, individual, to individualize CPP. Uh, which is the best tool is a question, which is the best target also still is a, a, a question, uh, especially if the patients don't show uh, autoregulation immediately, and maybe there are more answers uh, during the Congress. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Laurent, for uh, doing this uh, yeah. uh, pair with me. Um, and uh, I hope that the lunch was not too much troubled for you. Uh, and thank you also, Sofisa, for giving us the opportunity to discuss this topic with you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.